What's going on my dudes, Chensley11 here and welcome back to another episode in the A to Z series where we are going through every single champion in League of Legends and giving you a basic or beginner's guide on each of them. In today's episode we're going to be showing you how to play Nidalee Jungle for beginners. So this will be a Nidalee guide, we're going to be going through all of Nidalee's abilities, her runes uh, and also what to build on Nidalee. We're going to also cover the jungle clear because she is a jungler. Um, and then before we get into all that, we'd like to do an overview at the start of the video to just go over what I think about Nidalee um, in general. Uh, so if you are new here and you enjoy these videos, make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Uh, and if you're not, subscribe because we've got guides on every single champion uh, in League of Legends either out or coming out in the future. So I hope you enjoy. So let's go over Nidalee in general. So now most of my audience um, tends to be new to the game or at least trying to pick up the champion. Um, so if you are not new to the game, but you know Nidalee or you're not you don't know Nidalee and you want to watch a, a beginner's guide to understand what she does I'll just give you this She's an AP assassin um, That is a lot of fun to play, but she is in my opinion the hardest champion in the game to play consistently and play well so if you are genuinely new to the game or generally new to the game do I recommend playing Nidalee? No that's the short answer, but she is fun to play and with time uh, You can become you know sufficient on her to, to, to carry your games and that's what she is good at She's actually really strong at carrying games and snowballing a lead um, But she's just mechanically difficult to play and a little bit Inconsistent because of that um, Especially if you're new to the game if you've got a lot of experience on Nidalee you watch this game play and cringing it uh, because some of my mechanics on the on the champ aren't perfect, but that's because she's just that hard to play um, And we'll go through why she's hard to play as we go through all the abilities and it will start to make sense um, But this is League of Legends and in general the game is not that difficult, so I don't think she's impossible to play I think you can just pick her up. So we'll, we'll quickly um, You know while I finish off explain overall going through overall Nidalee uh, just quick mention, we, we're doing a three camp clear on Nidalee. Nidalee can full clear, but she's very strong early. So I recommend, and others do as well, to just do a three camp clear, which is um, your red buff, then blue, then gromp. Um, that way you're ready for the scuttle crab fight at, um, you know, you've got plenty of time at 3.15 to get the scuttle crab, plus you can gank before then. So my clear is obviously unhealthy because the, the lack of experience, but you can clear that. Um, if you have never played Nidalee before, I don't recommend doing a full clear. You might die to your chickens or something. Because she's hard to play if you've never played. You've got to kite very well because she, she's quite um, an unhealthy jungler. But you can see here, the gank on the Renekton. I walk in and get the red buff proc to slow. And then I try and hit the spear and jump. But uh, he got out of the way. That's fine. Um, just put a bit of pressure on him. And then we're going to make sure we get this scuttle crab. Uh, so what I was saying, yeah. So her clear is quite low. That was another thing I wanted to say in general. She is great because she's um, she does magic damage, so she can fill a gap in the team if you have like an AD mid lane. Like we actually have this game, so it's a good example. And Lulu doesn't really, who's our support, doesn't really bring forth a lot of magic damage. So without me, if I was playing an AD jungler, um, like Graves or something, then we wouldn't have much magic damage at all. So the team could just counter build, counter our team by uh, building um, a lot of, uh, look at that spear. By building a lot of armor, right? So they they can't do that this game because then they'll be weak to me. So we're gonna make sure we try and hit the bard. We flash. He flashes our um, our flash W. I think we hit him with a spear, uh, and then we're gonna try and kite back into the the bush, and hopefully my team can pick it up. So we die, but the team picks up a kill. We get the double kill of the bot lane. In my opinion, worth, um, especially for Nidalee who wants a snowball. Um, that's actually good. In all honesty, I probably could have got a, got away there. If I didn't flash onto the bard and just hit him with a spear, I would have had my flash to get away from the vein. But as I say with all these videos, the gameplay is not everything. Uh, we just, we're just playing, um, you know, play some games, get a good game, and then make this video so you guys can understand what's going on in general, so you guys can pick up nearly for yourselves. So once you, um, you know, you get your full clear or your three camp clear, you get a scuttle crab. I happened to get two scuttle crab. No, I didn't quite finish the second scuttle crab because I went after the bard. But once you get your scuttle crab, I like to try and double scuttle to see how we go because you are strong early. Um, you can't duel like Nunu um, champs, like high dueling champs level one, um, you know, early level, sorry. But you can duel most of the junglers out there. So uh, you can do that. If you are up against someone that you think you're not going to be sure you can beat, you can take Ignite instead of Flash. 
um, but then obviously you lose your flash. The reason why you can do that is because of your Cougar Form W. Now, there's a lot of abilities. We're going to go through them all in a lot of detail in a moment. So just um, be patient and we'll go through everything so you know exactly what everything does. Um, that way it makes more sense. Um, but first, we're going to quickly go through the runes. That way you know what to take when you get into your game. So, for Nidalee, uh, because she's a Snowball Champ, Dark Harvest is the way to go. So you take Dark Harvest, so you want to be getting... Uh, you know, when you hit someone that's low, they take damage, and then you get a Dark Harvest stack, which means the next time they take more damage. Um, it's just great for snowballing and exploding low health targets, which is what Nidalee wants to do anyway. Sudden Impact, uh, after leaving Stealth or a Jump, you get uh, Lethality, which is uh, perfect because Nidalee is using her Cougar Form W a lot, which is like a jump. So that is uh, why you take Sudden Impact. Then you want to go Eyeball Collection for Adaptive... Um, you get an adaptive bonus, so you get more damage. Treasure Hunter for more gold, so that means you snowball more, but you have to kill... The more people you kill on the enemy team, you get additional gold. Uh, Transcendence uh, for ability haste later on in the game, and then Water Walking, so you can get around the map more when you're in the river. So they're, they're the runes. Um, you also take attack speed, adaptive force, and armor. Uh, they're the runes. Um, fantastic. I wouldn't recommend anything else, really, on Nidalee. Um, there are probably other pages you can find that would serve you well, but this page to start off with is fantastic. Dark Harvest is also fun too, because it gives you a little bit of scaling, which is great. Um, so you can see here, I make sure to try and counter gank whenever I can. Uh, sorry, counter jungle the enemy camps whenever I can. I tried to like lead the spear there, so it makes sure he runs into it, but I screwed it up. But I think we hit the spear. No, we just missed. Aatrox is coming in for the counter gank. Um, and we didn't quite heal the... Um, we could have healed the my mid laner. But unfortunately, we missed. I think we hit the yeah we hit the gangplay with the long range spear. Get the dark harvest proc, proc. So it's all good in the hood. Unfortunately, we die there. Uh, our laner dies there. But you know that's what I mean. Like she's hard to pull off. Um, if I was playing a champion that was easy to play, like Kindred, maybe I probably would have got the kill on the gangplank easy, and then we could have turned on the Aatrox and, and he wouldn't die. But once you get good at Nidalee, you would just kill him anyway, and then you have a nice escape. Uh, you know, with your mobility on your W. So making sure to kite the camp, we're super low, we use our heal, um, and then we get the red buff. Alright, so that's the um, runes. Now we're going to go through the level up order, or the skills you should take at what level. So you want to start Q level 1. That's your main source of damage through Nidalee's kit, entire kit. So definitely start Q level 1. W level 2. Uh, e level 3. Then you want to max your Q, max your E, and then max your W third. My, what I mean max is you want to take a point in it when it's available. Um, so there's a priority, and that, that will be on the screen. So Q is the first priority, E second priority, W third priority. Um, so their abilities, the reason why you want to max your Q, as I said, it's your main source of damage. Um, w is more of a one point wonder, so once you have your W, um, that's your mobility, your jump, and your bushwhack, uh, you've got it. Then your E is your, your heal, and your next source of delivery, which is your swipe, which I just used there on the, on the Krugs, so you want to max that second. Basically... The trading pattern on Nidalee is quite simple. Um, you, um, when you're farming, you want to try and cycle through your abilities. Um, so you're using as many different abilities as you can. Um, it's a lot more complicated than that. We'll get through it when we, after I've explained all the abilities. So it makes more sense. Um, but first, we'll go through the build. Um, so you definitely want to start um, your Ember Knife. And then you want to go your Refillable Potion. That's the start. Now, well, I love to rush Sork Boots uh, because you get Penetration, which is better early because you're an early game century champ that wants a snowball. They work out better. Uh, then you want to rush your Night Harvest as your first uh, Mythic item or as your Mythic item. Now, you can also take Proto Bell. Now, if you're super new to Nidalee, I don't recommend this because that's just another thing you've got to think about, especially if you're going to be building Zonyas, which you will in this build. Then you're going to have two active items plus six abilities. Plus, she's squishy. Uh, so you're going to struggle because there's more things to think about. So Night Harvest is also a good item. I, I think it's actually very good. Uh, it'll give you more ability haste so you can use your abilities more often. Um, and it gives you movement speed, which is kind of... It's not exactly Proto Belt, but it still gives you mobility, right? So it gives you movement speed instead of the actual little dash and damage. Um, but if you're game and you want to try Proto Belt, go for it. So Zonya's second item. Shadow Flame is fantastic. Um... Nidalee is one of those champs that wants to pick up the Dark Seal, so I've picked it up early. Uh, whether you can stack it up and whether it's worth to purchase the uh, Magi's is up to you. Um, you know, it's game dependent. If you're doing really well, 
buy the Magi's if you're just chilling. Sit on the dark seal until maybe you start popping off. Otherwise, just sell it and complete your your core items. Uh, and then void staff if they got a lot of magic resist. Death cap if they don't. Uh, the st same old rules apply. Relanomicon if they have a lot of healing. Banshee's Veil if you feel like you need a spell shield. Uh, and then so on, so on. So that's everything I wanted to cover before the abilities. Now, this is the main part of the video now. The, the abilities and what makes... What, you know, what Nidalee does. Um, now, we'll start off with her passive. Which is called Prowl. So, Prowl. When in a bush, Nidalee gains 10% movement speed for 2 seconds. Increased to 30% when facing nearby visible enemies. Okay, so once you're in a bush, you get 10% movement speed. If you are in a bush and you're moving towards um, visible enemies, it's 30%. Um, now, hitting, an, hitting a monster or enemy champion with your Javelin Toss, which is your Q in, in human form, or your Bushwhack, um, while they're nearby, applies a Hunter's Mark, Hunted Mark, sorry, which reveals them, so you can see them for 4 seconds. Um, and then you gain 10% movement speed towards them, increase to 30 when facing them. Now, those two movement speed um, passives stack, but only up to a maximum of 30%, I believe. So what does that mean? It means if you've stacked, if you've hit someone with a Q, and you're in a bush, but you're running away from them, it's 20%, essentially. Look at that burst damage on the bard. That was the combo there, but I want I don't want to fully commit because I don't know where Vayne is. There she is now. Um, but that's okay. If I had Ignite, maybe I could have gone after her, but then I didn't have Flash. I personally like taking Flash, um, unless I'm super, super confident I'm going to start snowballing really bad, and then I can uh, take the Ignite. Um, what was I saying? Uh, Nilly's first... So, Nilly's... So once you've marked a target with your Bushwhack, which is that little trap on the floor, or your Human Form Q, which is that one I just used, um, they are... they are The enemy you've thrown it on are marked, and... Once you hit them with your first use of your, that's a nice Q, the first use of your Cougar Form W or your Cougar Form Q have increased, um, they're empowered. And we'll go through what the empowered means in a moment. So basically, what does the passive do? We'll, we'll, we'll sum it up. So you get bonus movement speed when you're in a bush. You get bonus, it goes up to 30% if you're in a bush running towards an enemy. That's visible. So basically that fantasy of, you know, you're in the jungle and you're, you're chasing after someone so you can burst them. Now, if you hit someone with your Q, you get a bonus. You hunt, They go hunted. You can see they're hunted with those little lines on the ground and there's a ring. So then when you use your W, <coughs> when you're in cougar form, you can just jump directly to them. Uh, and then also uh, your first Q and your first W have an empowered effect. And we'll go through that in a moment. So next, normally I go through my Q, but on Nidalee... Because she's one of these champions that has two forms, we're going to go through her R, which is her, her ultimate, but it's not her ultimate, right? Because she doesn't really have one. I missed, that's a bad Q to miss. I should hit that. Fortunately for us, um, the Orn hits a nice ultimate. We can finish her off with the Q while the Renekton CC'd. Uh, but we just get out on the skin of our teeth. So, we're going to go over Nidalee's R, which is called Aspect of the Cougar. Now... This ability, you start with that level 1, which is unique. It's kind of like Elise, right? And Jace. The champions that start with their R level 1, uh, but it does something. It doesn't, it, you know, switches forms. It doesn't actually have a, 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 an ability part of it, right? So, Aspect of the Cougar. Nidalee switches between Human and Cougar form. It's very, very simple. While in Cougar form, Nidalee, uh, sorry, Cougar form, Nidalee transforms into a Cougar and gains uh, melee attacks at a range of 125 and access to a Cougar abilities. Now, while she's in Cougar form, Nidalee, tra and she uses her R, Nidalee transforms into Human form, gaining range attacks at 525 attacks. Nice long range Q there. We're sniping people with these Qs, absolutely slapping them. 525 range on her auto attacks, and she gets uh, access to her Human form abilities. Now, applying a Hunted Mark will reset, so Hunted, remember, is hitting your Q or your Bushwhack, will reset the aspect of Cougar Form's uh, cooldown. So what does this mean? If you hit a Q uh, while in Human Form, like you get, it resets your uh, Cougar Form's cooldown, like the, the you know, to switch it. Um, so basically, if you're hitting your Qs, you can basically switch to Cougar Form immediately and jump on top of them. That's all that means. Um, that's a little aside there. That you, you Once you've played Nidalee enough, you'll just recognize that's happening. Uh, but you won't 
If you've never played Nidalee, you might not notice that. So we missed the Vayne because she double takes back. We can still burst her with our combo in Cougar form. Um, so we're getting around the map. We're 4-1-2. and two. We're doing okay this game. Um, for me playing Nidalee, I think we're playing very well. Uh, because I think she's a really tough champion to play. Mix it in with playing jungle. If you're not comfortable in the jungle, this can be a tough game to play. But once you get comfortable, it's a lot of fun, honestly. All right, Nidalee begins with one rank of Aspect of the Cougar, but it increases at, you can increase at level 6, 11, 16 like normal champions. Um, and then Cougar Form's ability scale based on the ultimate rank. So while she's in Cougar Form, her abilities scale with, the, with her ultimate level, if that makes sense. So who, when you're level 11, then your Cougar Form abilities do more damage in 16 and so on, and level 6 and 16 and so on, right? That's why... Uh, so I think it's just your human form stuff gets increased power when you level them up. All right. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to go through each of the abilities, Q, W, E, but we're going to go through them. Oh, look at that. So here I make a bit of a mistake. I hit the I hit the vein with a nice, um, with a massive uh, Q, but I was in tower range, so I just committed, and then I ended up getting killed for it. Uh, I thought I was in tower range, so I was going to back off. I was going to chase her without getting tower aggro, essentially, but I was in range, and then the tower started shooting me, and it was too late, and then I was out of position. If I didn't, if I didn't take tower aggro, I could have just turned around, ran back through the tower, taken one, max two, and got out there. Uh, but unfortunately, we die stupidly, we give a shutdown away, and we basically give them the dragon. So a bit of a big mistake there, trying to get two ham, trying to kill the vein. All right, let's go through uh, the Q. So the Q, we're going to go through human form first, which is called Javelin Toss. Very, very simple ability. I've been using it all game. Nidalee hurls a Javelin in a target direction that deals magic damage to the first enemy hit. So it can hit uh, minions and monsters first. So if you're trying to hit a champion, make sure there's nothing in the way. Um, increase to 0 to 25, uh, sorry, 0 to 200% based on distance travel. So the longer the Javelin travels, the more damage it does. Now... It does more base damage, and also the AP scale increases the further it travels as well. So, what does that mean? It just means the longer the, the, the Javelin travels, the more damage it does. And later on in the game, when you've got a lot of AP, if you hit a max range Javelin, you can almost one-shot squishies. It's really, really satisfying. I think I get one later on in the game, but it's out of vision, so I can't even see them, and they just die, which is fantastic. And you can only see in this game um, how much damage the Javelin actually does if you hit someone with it at max range. That is... Another thing that w what makes Nidalee hard is the Javelin Toss. Because it is your main source of damage, it's it's easy to miss. You can hit him, but it is easy to miss, right? So if you're not hitting your Qs, you're not doing any damage. So Renekton is in our jungle. He's got a level on us, so I don't, I'm a little bit apprehensive to fight him. My mid, my team is collapsing, so we could look for something. But, you know, I can't really go in first, because he'll just stun me with his... Um, I can't remember that ability that smacks his rape, Wraith down, and then... I'll get stunned, then he'll just combo me and I'll die. Because I'm quite squishy. I'm a little bit of a poke, 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 jump in and burst, right? That's Nidalee's identity. So while my team's getting pressure mid, might as well take the Rift Herald. And it gives us time to explain the Cougar Form Q, which is called Takedown. So, Nidalee empowers her next basic attack within uh, within 10 seconds to have an uncancelled one up, gains bonus uh, range, 75 range, and modified to deal uh, magic damage that is increased by amount. For every um, percent of health the enemy is missing. What does this mean? So, basically, your Cougar Form Q turns into an auto attack reset uh, or empowered auto attack that does magic damage. Look at that, look at that damage. So, if we flash W here, we could have got him, but he, he got out of range and then this looks just troll. And I think we die. Did we die here? I think we die again. I oh, know we Zonia is the, the, we the uh, burn, but we still die anyway. So, again, Little bit of trolling there, tried to get on top of the bard to kill him. Like looking back, even if I killed the bard, the flash isn't worth it to kill the support. So that was just a shit play in general. Alright, so your your Q in Cougar form is an auto attack reset. It turns your auto attack to empowered. It gives you bonus um damage and it's as magic damage. And it does more damage the more health the enemy is missing. So it's an it's a execute, right? So the lower health they are, the more damage your Q does. So that's why you want to finish off your combo with your Q. Use your javelin. Jump in on top of them with your W E Q, right? That's the combo on Italy, uh, to full burst. Um, takedowns reset Nidalee's basic attack timer, and other damage, other damage converted to magic damage by takedowns are not increased by takedowns respective. Nidalee loses takedown and power attacks immediately if she switches to human form. Um, 
If you're starting out in Italy, you can give that a read. You might understand it. If not, then just ignore that. It's it's a little bit complicated, um, especially for beginners. Just just know what the Q does is 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 fine, right? It's an it's an empowered auto attack. Now, remember how I said the uh, her abilities in Cougar form scale with your ultimate level. So remember that is that's obviously um, that's obviously what I'm talking about with the, with the Cougar form Q. The scene we're looking for a long range Q. We hit the bard from max range and it just explodes. Then we jump onto the vein, burst it all the way out. She nearly dies to me, and then my team finish her up. So again, working with the team, doing what nearly does. Long range spears from flanks, jumping onto the target set of low. We use our Rift Herald uh, to take this tower. For, unfortunately, the uh, Gangplank uses his ultimate, so it clears most of our way. But again, look at that. We hit Gangplank with a massive Q again. And we're looking to try and fish again. That's why Dark Harvest is awesome on Nidalee too, because if you can hit someone while they're low and they get the, you get the Dark Harvest prop, they just explode. I use Shift Q if you guys don't have that bound to, to check the range to see if I can land it. Helps with hitting long range Qs like that. Alright, so that's the Q. Remember, uh, it's an enhanced auto attack in Cougar form. Let's go through Nidalee's W. So we're going to go through the human form, which is called Bushwhack. So the Bushwhack is quite simple. Nidalee lays a trap in a target location. Um, that becomes stealth after 1.5 seconds. Lasting for 120 seconds, grinding sight within its radius. The trap will be sprung upon contact with an enemy. So that's, that's minion monster enemy champion. Dealing magic damage over 4 seconds. Um, the magic damage like ticks uh, and it scales with 50%, 20% uh, after max ticks. Um, you know, it ticks 4 times. So after 4, 5% AP ratio ticks, it's 20% in total. Um, the damage is not insane. What it's good for is to... Um, basically mark the target so you can pounce onto them and get the empowered pounce and Q. Uh, did we... Let's have a look here. Uh, bonus damage. Oh, before we finish, I didn't I didn't mention what the bonus was to the takedown when I was mentioning the takedown, but I'll, I'll quickly mention that in a moment. Uh, so remember, Bushwhack will mark the target. Um, tracks, the traps have... Uh, six health, uh, so getting an auto attack from a melee champion will remove three of the health. From a ranged champion's auto attack, it's two health. So basically, a melee champion has to hit your trap twice to kill it. A ranged has to hit it three times to kill it. Uh, this is all not that. Um, that's at first level. It's not insanely important to know that. Just putting your traps down, what do they do? They do magic damage, and they mark the enemy so you can pounce and use your empowered Q. So that's what the bushwhack does in human form. So quickly back to the human form, cougar form Q. The um, enhanced effect basically just gives it a bonus, um, bonus damage. Like you get more damage and it scales more with AD and uh, magic pen. Sorry, magic damage. Uh, so later on in the game, it does more damage because you have more, um, you have more magic damage, and it's in general just does more damage. That's all the empowered Q does in Q form. But I thought I would like to mention that specifically so you know exactly what it does so we jump onto the renekton with our Q form w and finish him off with our e and q aatrox is uh cleaning me up my team is here but we're quite low unfortunately we do enough damage so the team can win the fight they're also fed too so this is quite easy for me to win the fight akshan revives us anyway so it's all good fantastic what a champ what a champ so yeah that's basically the empowered uh cougar form q just more damage nothing special so let's go through the Cougar Forms W, which is called Pounce. So Pounce uh, has a passive and an active. So killing an enemy while in Cougar Form or using Pounce's Hunt uh, bonus reduces Pounce remaining cooldown to a minimum value. So if you kill an enemy with your W, it resets. And also if you jump onto a hunted target, so if you've hit them with your Q or your Bushwhack and you pounce onto them, the, the, the um, cooldown will be lowered. Uh, so you can use it more often, right? Just be aware that if you don't have someone marked, the, the W is a fixed distance. And we'll go through that now when we go through the active. So nearly dashes a fixed distance in a target direction dealing magic damage upon arrival. Now the hunted bonus is nearly can perform the pounce from an increased range on the hunted target closest to the cursor and can bounce to the target location near the hunted enemy if she's close. So that means you can kind of choose where you're bouncing instead of a fixed distance. So increases its versatility. Um, I think it also does... Um, a little bit more damage as well, but I might, I might not be correct about that. It just increases the ability to choose where you're pouncing to. Um, so if you can, if you have someone marked over a wall, you're more likely to jump over that wall. 
which is another thing about Nidalee, which is just going to take a lot of experience. Once you mark a target, you have a longer pounce, right? So you can pounce over bigger walls. Where if you don't have it marked and you're just running around in cougar form and you just push your W for a fixed distance, uh, you might not be able to jump over that specific wall, right? So that's just things that's going to take a lot of experience to pick up. Look at fishing for long range cues, which is what you want to be doing at all times when you're playing Nidalee, uh, which is what we're doing here. Um, so is that everything I wanted to mention? That's literally everything I wanted to mention with the W. Remember, you want to be pouncing. That's your first ability used when you switch to Cougar form. So you hit your Q, then you switch to Cougar form, and you jump on top of them with your W, right? That's that's the combo. Then you can use your Q and your E. If you're already in Cougar form like that, you can just jump on top of them. We miss our Q. We're using our ranged auto attacks. Unfortunately, we screwed that up because we missed our Q. Point blank Q we missed... And then we can disengage there with our Cougar Form W to get away with the pounce, right? That's what we're doing. So let's go through the E. Okay, so we're going to start with Human Form, uh, which is called Primal Surge. As again, we're sieging. Um, before we go into the ability, just a quick aside of what we're doing. Nilly's fantastic at sieging. She can sit behind minion waves and just throw Qs and whittle them down. Uh, so she's good at sieging. She's good at coming in from flanks. Uh, you can see that we, we half health the vein with one Q. So that's why she's really good at sieging. Because if they're paying attention to minions or dodging other people's stuff and then you hit them with a max range Q, you can chunk out people. So, Primal Surge while the enemy team collapse on us. <clears throat> I think they're going to pick up the uh, Varus, which is unfortunate. But we're just going to throw Qs on the way out. And maybe we can pick someone off. So, Primal Surge. Nidalee revitalizes herself or a target ally, granting bonus attack speed for 7 seconds and healing the target. For 0 to 100% with that. Oh, that Q. Disgusting. Um, healing them for... Uh, based on their missing health. So the lower they are, the more the heal does. So if I heal the Akshan here, it'll be a big heal. Now, one thing I do do not do enough of when I play Nidalee is healing my allies. Especially ADC or attack... Attack damage... Um, you know, auto-attack reliant champions. Because the, the bonus attack speed when max level... Which is your second max. Remember, you max your E second... Is 60%, which is quite a lot, um, which is support levels of like boosts, right? So increasing your ADC's attack damage by 60 60% uh, 60 for seven seconds is actually a nuts attack speed steroid, which will allow them to win close fights, right? So remember to do that. You can use it on yourself and throw your spears out a lot quicker. Um, I usually use it for a heal in the in the clears in the first clear, um, and then, like, you know, when I'm when I'm clearing the jungle, I just pop it on myself as well to give myself increased attack speed. Um, but later on in the game, when you can just burst the whole camp, it's not that important. So let's go through the Cougar Forms E, which is the finally a simple ability. I mean, some of these abilities are simple. There's just a lot of them. Look at that max range Q. Destroys the Bard. We're trying to stay on the periphery of the fight. We don't want to go in there because we're just going to die. We throw the Q. We hit the Renekton. We wanted the Bard because he would have died. Again, we got our Q up. And we hit the Bard as he's trying to escape. We get a Dark Harvest proc. Chuck up the emote. Oh, just missed the gangplank. So, super simple ability. Cougar Form E is called Swipe. Nidalee slashes in an arc in a target direction, dealing magic damage to enemies hit. Super easy. Scales with your Cougar rank. Um, your aspect of the Cougar's rank, so your, your ultimate level, essentially. Um, and it's like an AoE ability, so it's not targetable. So you can actually miss your E. So you want to make sure you... What I do is when I'm when I W and I, as I land I E immediately, so it's very hard to miss because they're on top of you if you W on top of them, and then I Q for the auto attack reset. Now to be 100% damage efficient, you want to auto Q to um, to increase that damage if you're trying to fully one shot. Once you get fed enough, it won't matter. You can just jump on top of an E. With, you hit your Q, they're like half health because you've just chunked them with your Q. You jump on top of them with your W, your E, then your Q, and they explode. Again. We're not trying to get in on the fights, um, like melee range. We're trying to stay ranged and just jump in when we know we can get the kill. Uh, that's basically how you want to play Nidalee. So that's all of our abilities. Um, we'll go through now some combos and stuff. I know we've, I've been alluding to a, a fair bit during the video. But again, Nidalee is a quite complicated champion. And as always, guys, if you have any questions whatsoever, leave them in the comment section and I'll reply to them. I reply to every single comment left on the channel. And if you have enjoyed the video thus far, make sure to hit the like button. So... Basically, that's it. Nidalee is a champion uh, that's an AP assassin. Uh, she likes to stay on the, the outskirts of the fights, doing damage with her long-range Qs. Um, she's good at ganking if you can hit that initial Q. That's a fantastic Q. 
if you can't hit the Q, you don't do damage, right? So you need to make sure you're hitting the Qs, which will just take practice. It also requires you to understand the champion you're trying to hit with the Q. Um, champions that are immobile, like the Bard, are easy to hit and they're big and fluffy. Very easy to hit. Champions like, you know, Callista will be insanely hard to hit because they're constantly dashing around or, you know, there's plenty of examples of champions that have a shitload of dashes. So in that situation, you might want to close up on them if you have your red buff, close up on them when you gank and then hit the Q when they're closer to unlock the hunted stack so then you can W. There's the bard, we jump on there, we get the full combo. He, he ends up ulting himself. Um, but we just, we just, um, I think we used our Q and then we got away. Now I'm trying to use my, um, my pounce but I screwed it up. So you can see here, mechanics aren't great at all but we end up doing a, fair, a pretty good game with 9, 5 and 7. Uh, we ended up getting pretty far into a build. We ended up getting Murillo uh, in this particular game because they had Aatrox, who has healing. Uh, Vayne, who has some healing. I think there was other people, you know. Renekton has healing. Uh, Gangplank has his oranges, I guess, which is some healing. So they had a lot of healing. So we built the Morellos early to counter out to that. Um, and again, we get rezzed by the Akshan, who's been doing a lot of rezzing, which is fantastic. So just knowing the, the games to build certain items as well will help. Um, this game ended up being pretty easy. We got a pretty good start to the game. Uh, we got a little bit of snowball going. We got all the objectives, so it made the game easy for my team. They did well too. Um, but yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the game. It wasn't the best game of Nidalee I could have got, but it was decent enough. And I thought it was a good video to show you just the beginnings of how to play Nidalee. Uh, again, any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Uh, remember to hit your spears. Have fun. Um, be patient if you're trying to learn Nidalee. She's quite hard to play. Uh, but I think after a bit of practice, you can get there and have some fun on the Cat Lady. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy.